Hello Calc Kids! Welcome back to another lesson in calculus. This is Mr. Bean. Today we're going to focus in on how to integrate these vector valued functions that we've been working with for the last couple of lessons. I think you'll like this because it's really, really basic. There's nothing new going on here. We just take these vector valued functions. You can go ahead and start getting this written down. Take the horizontal component, you take the integral, you take the vertical component, you take the integral, and you're done. Okay, so this lesson should be pretty quick and easy and straightforward. Pause the video right now if you don't have this written done yet, because I'm going to go ahead and start jumping into some examples. So first example, we are going to find what is r of t if we have the derivative r prime of t. Uh, so in this case, let's see here, we're just going to take the, each component individually. So again, if we have the derivative, then finding the antiderivative will get us back to the original function. So we'll take the integral of 4e to the 2t uh, with respect to t. And then over here, we'll take the integral of 2e to the t with respect to t. Now, this is going to cause a little bit of a headache because it is, uh, you can see this chain rule thing going on here because of the 2t and the exponent, which means we need u substitution to do the integral. So I'm going to say that u equals 2t. Therefore, the derivative of u over the derivative of that, which is 2, that's going to be my dt. All right, so I'm skipping a little bit of steps here because I didn't leave a ton of room on the notes because I wanted to cram this all into one page. Sorry about that. But you should be able to follow along, I hope, here. So now this becomes, so the dt is du over 2. So hopefully you can see that that 2 right there is going to cancel and reduce with the 4. So that's now a 2 because it was 4 over that 2 e raised to the, and now instead of a 2t, I'm just going to say u. And now this is d, whoops, du, instead of dt. And then over here, uh, that one's pretty basic. Yeah, let's just keep doing this one now. Oh, these are actually not the same problem. All right, the integral of this is 2e to the u. Well, u was 2t, so I can say 2t. And then I'm going to have plus a constant. Over here, when I take the integral of this one, it is also 2e to the t plus a constant. Now these constants technically are different, so I should probably label this one as a little c1 and this one as a little c2. When you're doing your work on the practice, it's not going to really matter that much. You just want to make sure you remember these are not the same values of c. They're not the same constants. They're different constants. Now how do I figure out what these constants are? That's where this part comes in right here, this r of 0. They tell us that when t is 0, the x is a 2. Right? And so remember, what I probably should have done is started off by saying this is x equals. So this is x equals. This is x equals. So now, if I say that the x is a 2, so here I can say 2 equals, then at what point? When the t value here, when r of t is a 0. So this is 2e to the 0 plus some constant. And then when you solve this, this is just e to the 0 is 1. So this is 2. You subtract the 2, you get 0 equals that first constant. Now let's figure out what this constant is. So what I probably should have done here is, so maybe squeeze this in. As I should have said, this is what the y equals is. The y component of r of t is this. And so then here, this is the y component. And therefore, when y is a 0, so y is a 0 if t is a 0. So when t is 0, y is 0. So now here this is 2e to the 0, and then plus my other constant. So that is just 2. Subtracted over, I get negative 2 is the other constant. And now you can see then, I can write out that r of t is going to equal my vector function, which is, what's my r of t? So the x is here. 2e to the 2t plus my constant. 2e to the 2t plus my constant of 0. So actually, I'm just not going to write that. It's just plus 0, right? So I'm going to need to write plus 0. So there's the first, the horizontal component. And then the other part of my vector valued function would be the y component. So it's right here. 2e to the t plus the other constant, which was a negative 2. Ah, so minus 2, not plus. Minus 2. 2. And then I can close my weird little bracket, and there is my vector valued function. So again, you can see here, you're not doing anything that's really new. You're just integrating each individual piece, but then trying to keep track of the t is a 0, the x is a 2, and where do you plug those things in? 
All right, let's do another example here. Now this one you'll see, we're going to actually have the plus constants. We're not gonna figure out, we don't have an original function or an original value of the, the uh, vector value function. So we're gonna have a plus C in our answer. So the X component is going to equal the integral of secant squared, and then the, uh, with respect to T, and then the Y component will be the integral of one over one plus T squared again with respect to t. So hopefully you recognize this one. The antiderivative of secant squared is just tangent. So tangent of t plus a constant, and then this one is going to be y equals, uh, do you recognize this? One over one plus t squared. This goes back to unit six where we practiced the antiderivative of trig inverse, and that's what this is. It's an inverse trig of tangent. Uh, and then I'll have my plus constant. So now to separate this, I'll say this is a constant number one, this is a constant number two, just to keep them separated. And then there, I don't have to figure out what the C is because I wasn't given any other information. All right, so on this one, I'm just gonna say that R of T is equal to vector valued function. So I have my vector and then I have functions inside here. So this one's just tangent T plus a constant, I'll call it C1. And then the other one is tangent inverse of T plus a constant, close my vector. Right, there's the first two. So pretty simple. We're not doing anything really that new, except for just identifying again each component part. All right, last one. Now this is where you have a situation where you will have a definite integral. So you're going on a boundary. Well, all you have to do here is take each individual component. You're gonna do negative one to one of t cubed with respect to t. And then you'll do uh, an integral from negative one to one of t to the one fifth with respect to t. So you just take each component and then you evaluate them with your boundaries for the definite integral. So this is 1 fourth t to the fourth and we're evaluating it from negative one to one. And so now plug in the one, you get a 1 fourth minus, plug in the negative one, you still get a 1 fourth. Okay, so then that equals zero. Uh, this one, so we add one, that becomes t to the six fifths and then divide by six fifths, which means we're gonna multiply by five sixths and evaluating that from negative one to one. So plug in the one, we get uh, that one raised to that power is still just five sixths. So five sixths minus, now plug in the negative one. So the question is, is this going to be a negative or a positive? Well, the fifth root makes it negative one, but when you raise it to the sixth power, so a negative one to the sixth power is positive. So this is positive five sixths. So we're subtracting a positive five, six, which also equals zero. So the answer to this is just the vectored form answer is that this is a zero and that one is a zero. So when they're definite integrals, that's all you're doing. You're just doing the definite integral of each individual component and then finding it from there. So now that's pretty much everything. There's going to be a couple little problems in here where you'll have to apply some principles you know about velocity and some other things, but we're really gonna save stuff going on with motion and velocity for our next lesson, so there won't be too much of that. It should be fairly straightforward for you. So rock that mastery check. I'm signing off here, and I'll see you back in our next lesson.